Welcome back to America's Voice Live alongside of Tudor Dixon. I am Matt Locke. Tudor, we've been covering the Democrat National Convention. It's day two today. We just talked about Governor Andrew Cuomo of the great state of New York. And joining us right now is Gavin Wax. He is the president of the New York Young Republicans Club. Thank you, Gavin, for joining us once again. Thank you guys for having me. So, Gavin, we were just talking about your governor. He's talking about the European uh, coronavirus, which is odd because everybody threw a fit when Trump called it the China coronavirus. But uh, what's going on in New York, Gavin? I want to talk to you in specific. I just saw an article this morning where nursing home deaths under your governor could be as high as 11,000, not 6,000. What's happening over there in that great state of New York? Well, it looks like they're doing investigations into the incompetence of uh, Governor Cuomo and finding out that even more deaths were attributed to his disastrous executive order to stuff the nursing homes filled with infected patients. Uh, so the more that comes out, the worse that the situation looks for him. But he's in a completely uh, different dimension. I mean, you know, you saw him at the DNC uh, convention last night, basically just talking about how great he was, how great his response was. Now we heard he wants to release a book in October. I mean, unless the book is going to detail about, you know, uh, his crime and his uh, how he committed his crime and got away with it. I'm not sure exactly what he's going to say uh, that would be worthwhile to read. I mean, he was responsible uh, for the worst coronavirus response in the country, um, but he doesn't seem to grasp that at all, and he's deflecting, and now he's calling it the European virus, which is so absurd considering the virus did not originate in Europe, and most likely uh, it had a far greater impact in China than it did in Europe. Obviously, China's figures are skewed. Uh, so he's just doing this uh, to be contrarian and to uh, cover his pathetic uh, uh, you know, cover his pathetic behind for all the uh, trouble and uh, disaster he's brought to the state. Well, Gavin, the last time we had you on, we talked about crumbling Manhattan. Last night was the DNC convention, and you are a young Republican. They had young Democrats speaking. I want to play that, and then I want to ask you a question about it. Here it is. Um, because we understand that this future that we all want, that we're all trying to build, um, really is about the destruction of colonization, white supremacy, and capitalism. We must, uh, we must really move away from these uh, systems and these frameworks if we really want to live in a future that does have a regenerative economy and um, does enable liberation and equity for our community. That was the Youth Council for the DNC. They're talking about getting rid of capitalism. Like I said, we've seen what's happening in Manhattan with all of these laws that have gone into place, all these leftist rules that they have in Manhattan. Now, how does it help the United States to get rid of capitalism? Council of the DNC sounded like the Youth Council of the People's Republic of North Korea. I mean, that was absolutely ridiculous, getting rid of capitalism. I'm not sure exactly what demographic they're trying to appeal to here, uh, because crusty old socialists are not going to help carry them over in uh, November. Um, I think the Democrats have a problem with their base. Uh, we're seeing it in some of the poll numbers among African Americans, among Hispanics, and even among the youth vote, which they've all traditionally held uh, rock solid. Uh, if you look on the right, you have many different organizations in the grassroots, gr grassroots infrastructure, things like TPUSA, Students for Trump, the Young Republicans, the College Republicans, Young Americans for Freedom, Young Americans for Liberty. They are all robust organizations with uh, massive numbers of chapters, with a, with a lot of youth and a lot of energy and a lot of vibrancy uh, to their ranks. And you just don't see anything equivalent to that on the left anymore. I mean, they have a lot of default uh, nominal Democrats among young people, but they're not fired up. They're not passionate about Joe. Uh, and that's why you saw last night at the DNC, they were all making pleas uh, to make sure they get out to vote, to make sure the enthusiasm uh, is, is high for November, because they are worried. They're worried about losing uh, some key demographics uh, in 2020, and it's showing. And, and these, uh, these appeals to a, a vocal minority is not going to help them uh, take back their core demographics. Well, Gavin, it doesn't seem like the Democrats care anymore that you think they're socialists. Actually, we heard Bernie Sanders last night. I want you to listen to this. He bragged about dragging the Democrat Party to the left. Take a listen. Our campaign ended several months ago, but our movement continues and is getting stronger every day. Many of the ideas we fought for that just a few years ago were considered radical are now mainstream and gavin he's not wrong is he 
Well, what's fantastic about that clip is he spoke after uh, the Republican, uh, John Kasich, who was trying to make an appeal to whatever's left of the blue dogs. And I guess any kind of Republican who's very confused about what's going on in this country. Oh, no, don't worry. Joe is not going to go to the left. The Democrats, we can trust them. They're moderates. Meanwhile, you got uh, you got Grandpa Bernie up there talking about, uh, you know, his radical ideas for this country. I mean, it's a real shame. And you're right. They don't care anymore. They're unabashed socialists. They've completely moved to the left. They've adopted a European style. Uh, you know, uh, left wing agenda that's completely antithetical to most voters in the U.S., um, even though they're trying to change that drastically with the media, with with academia, with all their uh, cultural institutions. But we have to push back uh, because I think th this message, the message of Bernie, the message of AOC is not going to play well in the Midwest in these battlegrounds and among, you know, a working class uh, average American family, average American voter. It's only appe appeasing to uh, people in, in San Francisco or New York, and it, it doesn't have a broad appeal. Well, Gavin, I would say that the first time we really pushed Americans as victims was during the Obama administration, and they are staying true to that. I want you to listen to what Michelle Obama had to say about herself last night. I understand that my message won't be heard by some people. We live in a nation that is deeply divided, and I am a black woman speaking at the Democratic Convention. But enough of you know me by now. You know that I tell you exactly what I'm feeling. You know I hate politics. But you also know that I care about this nation. We have about two minutes left. She hates politics so much that she didn't bother to even refilm her speech after they picked a VP choice. But she's a victim. This is a woman who was the first lady of the United States, the first black president, her husband, but people won't listen to her because she's oppressed as a black woman in the U.S. Who is pushing the narrative that there's racism? Well, this that speech from Michelle is just lies, 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 and more lies. It's all contrived. It's all phony. There was nothing authentic about it. Uh, she obviously cares very much about politics. She's hoping for a political future. And the fact that she was the first lady of this country and is speaking at the DNC uh, convention shows that we are a uh, just society. We are an equitable society. And people of all backgrounds, all colors, all uh, socioeconomic uh, classes could rise through the ranks of our society and make it to the very top. She's a testament to that. You Yet she's trying to go there and, and make this appeal, claiming that the United States is a broken, evil country that we need to fix. Uh, so I don't know who exactly uh, is buying into this. I mean, her, her very presence there seems to contradict everything she's saying. Um, but, you know, of course, she couldn't even be bothered to refilm it. I mean, everything about their production quality was a joke. The entire thing was boring. Uh, I was being put to sleep through most of it. It was a struggle to watch it. The only thing that kept me up was their bizarre uh, music videos. It looked like something out of a bad uh, trip from, like, 1974 or something. But I guess they think that's what's... Uh, <laughs> what's going to carry over the voters, their cringy uh, music videos. I mean, they have a huge problem, and it shows. Gavin Wax, president of the New York Young Republicans Club, thank you so much for being on. Matt, he is right. That video was wacky. It was like a psychedelic, weird trip. But it is definitely, I, I, I think he had a really good point, something that I hadn't thought about. But I don't know why I had I guess I'm so used to Michelle Obama playing the victim card that I hadn't thought about the opportunity that she is missing by not going out there and saying, we've done this before. Look at how we have raised up women of color in the past, people of color in the past. This is Kamala's time. Will you come with me and help me push this woman across the finish line because we will make history together. But she chose not to do that. And I think that's odd, Matt. It, it's not. The Democrats got to play the victim. And you know what? 1974 was a good year. It was the year that I came into this planet, Gavin. I don't know why you picked 74, but look, 